I think I'll pick it up. But, well, it's going to be a quick and dirty little trip. So thank, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, so this is the second part of our little workshop on how to go about writing your paper, which is not to be meant for you to finalize writing a paper within this. But it's like a quick reminder of what we discussed two weeks ago, right? I gave you some general guidelines of how you may want to go about writing your paper. Remember, these are guidelines. Right? Everybody has different ways of writing, different ways of expressing and reading. But over time, I think it is helpful to follow some key points to expedite your writing. You will write your paper and it will be a good paper. How gracious, effective, and speedy that process is, it's really what I'm trying to like help you with, right? Papers wind up being good by necessity. Um, so, you know, those, all these different things, we're not gonna tackle all of them. I also, you know, added uh, the zero point basically before, remember the key ingredient was you have to have a key result, a key result, however marginal or amazing, right? It has to be a key result. And at that point you have to decide, okay, what kind of story am I gonna tell? Where does it fit? Who's the audience? Is it a, is it a short story? Is it a long story? Is it a review? You know, so think about that before you actually go with the first step, which is, can you tell a visual story with figures or illustrations? Kind of like, think about a comic, right? Um, and sometimes, you know, a, a letter tends to have two to three figures, an article tends to be five or so, a review might have more. If you wanna have a lot of figures, maybe some of them will have to go to supplementary information, but you are beginning to get restrained already by the formatting requirements in the audience. And, uh, you know, then you go through the methods, results, and what have you, uh, you know, few, sort of nuances were to say, you don't, when you're thinking about writing your paper, make your first outline, don't go overboard with your figures. Those will be perfect towards the end, but just make some sketches, just something that helps you build the story, right? Um, the key result really, and I, I feel like I will I will keep repeating this till, till the end of my days, it's that it, it has to be the key result, right? And we were just talking about this yesterday with right? lynching, right? And we get, we get lost in sort of, Ancillary results, things that embellish some result, but there has to be a key thing, succinct one sentence. I demonstrated A or B, yeah? Uh, and then the details can be polished later, right? So this write-up of the results doesn't need to be fancy to begin with either. Don't get caught up with writing too much yet, right? Oh, that's all I'm saying. Uh, and then, yeah, I like to have, sorry for the, I guess the Google uh, slides formatting issues here, but. Don't worry so much about writing the abstract perfectly, but I personally like to start with a tiny little abstract and an ugly title so that I remind myself every time I go to the paper, what is it that I was gonna tell? Because sometimes I change my mind and then I go off a tangent, you know, so it helps me keep anchored, you know, when I have a working title. Oh, this is the story I wanted to tell. So oftentimes we have many parallel stories or maybe a couple of papers we have in mind, right? But these are just my, my slight suggestions. So the homework that I, we had started to do and had asked you to uh, do and so, this is where I'll start talking soon and, and go by one by one by one. So hopefully, you know, some of you please start thinking as to whether you want to volunteer to present. But I want to go uh, uh, and have a, an open discussion amongst all of us, led by every one of you on one. Can you tell us what, you know, your assumed key finding was? You probably had to make it up. Maybe it's something that you're already drafting, so it's not made up. You know, what is your key finding, whether it's, you know, artificial or actual actually found in the lab or computationally just succinct right key finding this is what i found uh what's your vision statement which is to say okay what is the impact what is its value right why is that why is that key finding important right it's like the question as to, as to, to put this example that we we're discussing yesterday it's not not everybody will connect it but you know lynchon is has gotten pretty good uh efficiencies with what we're mixing is that 15 percent all right you might say this is a key finding. The vision statement is well, why is this somebody, why, why is this something that anybody will care about, right? Why can I get up this published? Not everything that is new is publishable, right? Um, and then what the target target audience and format is, is like, oh, I'm gonna submit this to uh, Nature Communications, I'm gonna submit this to uh, Joseph B, right? It was a formal or maybe a few, a few targeted uh, formatting. Something that many of you have exercised, oftentimes it's good to have your backup plans. Okay, if it doesn't make it to this, where does it go to and, and so on. It can also serve you time. And then I think the most important part is the last point that I wanna ask you to show is what kind of illustrations or figures you can sketch out. 
Um, can you give us a few bullet points on what methods you use for that imaginary or actual finding? And what a few points on those results? Yeah, does it make sense kind of like? And and maybe some of you did not really draft much of methods and results, but you can you can make it up as you go. So uh, I'll pause for a moment if there's any questions on this. And other than that, I am going to look for eager faces to sort of kickstart um, a little discussion. Do we have any volunteer? I, I can do my one. Uh, Great. Want. Thank can you, you hear me? I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. It's it's not a key finding as such. I've done it like on my thesis project, the master thesis. So the key finding is not like a real scientific finding. It's just like my project, but I think it might work. So let's warm up with that and see. Yeah. Right? Okay. Although it's not the, think... great, the best example, I think. But yeah, sure. Let's, let's warm up a little bit here. Do you want to share your? Yeah, I'll share my screen so you can see this. Um. Here. Okay, so you can see this, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, so it starts from here. So, as I said, it's not really a key finding, but it's more on the project I'm doing here. So, do we see your title? Uh, yeah. Uh, wait, wait. My title is here. I have to take it down. So. Design and implementation of control system for X-ray experiment. So what is the key finding? The key finding for research is the successful design and implementation of a control system for a high radiation X-ray generation experiment. This system enables remote operation and manipulation significantly enhancing safety and efficiency in experimental procedures. So, okay, that it's, that's the bit of the starting point. Then this is the vision statement, which expands a bit of, on that. Our vision is to implement a remote control system through serial communication to operate and manipulate high radiation X-ray generation experiments. By connecting all devices to a PC via RS-232, we aim to create a virtual instrument to control each device and integrate them into a comp comprehensive graphical user interface. This will allow researchers to operate this, the experiment from a remote location, minimizing exposure to radi radiation and improving overall safety. Um, then the methods. I mean, I haven't really had much exposure to papers, but <laughs> this is what uh, yeah, I've yeah. been able to do. So to achieve this vision, we employed a combination of LabVIEW programming, serial communication, and various communication protocols. Key methods and components include LabVIEW programming, we use LabVIEW to develop the VI in, in enabling control of each device in the experiment. Serial communication, RS-232 and RS-485 protocols were utilized to establish reliable connections between the PC and experimental devices. And ASCII protocols, these protocols facilitated clear and efficient communication between the devices and the control system and device-specific protocols. Custom protocols were developed for a specific device to ensure seamless integration and operation within the system. Um, the result, so the implementation of our control system yielded significant benefits, enhanced safety. Uh, researchers can control the X-ray experiment remotely using the UI, reducing their exposure to high radiation levels. And remote accessibility using Team Viewer researchers can connect from a remote PC to a local PC in the lab, allowing for flexible operation and monitoring of the experiment. And the figures I've listed some figures I would the ones I'm going to include in my like memory of my thesis. The final GUI a screenshot of the development GUI showcasing control options and real main time data display tabling and components. Diagrams illustrating the connections between the PC control devices and experimental setup and the PC setup configuration of the local and remote PCs, highlighting the use of Team Viewer for remote access. Okay, this, uh, this, is really, this is really helpful. Okay. While you don't have a key finding, it's true that there are instrumentation papers out there okay. where people need a. So this could actually make a paper, surprisingly, even though you don't have a key finding. It's an interesting nuance, it's an interesting kind of exception to what I was saying. You've, rather than a key finding, you have a key design that might be yeah. worth sharing in the community, right? So I want to hear 
Um, uh, this, I mean, I, does anybody have any response to that? I want to hear responses to this. Sort of, uh, perhaps constructively criticizing some of a. Uh, I mean, what do you see here? Might be could have been better or could be done differently. In any aspect of these these bullet points. Yeah, this is kind of similar to what I'm gonna write. So any any feedback is useful. I personally don't think you need to say X-ray experiments. Because I don't think, <clears throat> like, you don't exactly have x-rays in the system. No. Like, you could be blocking x-rays, right? But you can also be blocking for other purposes, right? There's, like, high voltage, right? There's problems with high voltage, and you don't really want to be next to that, right? There's okay. also, like, noise problems. Um, I want to sort of provide a little bit of guidance to the discussion, right? Because I think it can be a little bit tricky. So, well, so... There's two things here, right? One yeah. is the exercise that we're doing, and the other one is your thesis. Let's decouple these two, okay? Yeah, yeah. let's decouple these two. The, I think that here, what I don't want to question is what your value statement is. So if he wants to talk about x-rays, let's make it about x-rays, right? Oh, okay. I understand that for you, maybe voltage and what have you, okay. right? But he's saying, I've developed some remote control for x-ray diagnosis. Right? Yeah. I want to have a more of a meta conversation. As to, is he capturing the key points here? Are we missing any kind of figure for this value statement? Um, you know, but I mean, like when you're selling this as a, like you don't have like, I'm not just saying like this is targeted towards x-ray. Like I'm not saying like for his thesis, I just mean like in general, when you're selling a key finding, you also want to be sell, able to sell it to a broader audience. So sure. if you like kind of fix on x-ray, sometimes people might see it and they don't want to think about it. But if you like can bring up other reasons why you would need it, it makes it a more like useful paper for anyone else yeah. to hear. I agree, right? So yeah. I think what I'm missing then, yeah. my, my sort of follow-up comment to you, yeah. my, and my first critique is what I'm missing here is, well, what is your audience? Where are yeah, you going to publish this? And that determines whether you want to really focus on x-rays. Maybe it's just for x-ray community, but maybe you want to do for medical industry. Maybe, you know, so what are we, who, who is your audience yeah. here, right? And uh, that's that's the first thing I'm missing, right? What's what's your audience? What kind of paper yeah. are you writing? Um, it's not about, and always this is I'm making it broader, or too, too specific, it's about crafting your message to the community that you, so of course, if you want to have a high reaching audience, it needs to be broader than that, right? But if you really want to grab x-ray community's attention, then you want to, you really want to focus on that. So I, there's no right or wrong. It's about what is your key finding, right? And so I think the one thing that I don't want to question is your key finding. I just want to question everything that stems from that. The key finding is kind of made up. Yeah. I you, then you have to tell us, okay, what, what, who are you targeting? Yeah, I thought about the audience, but I thought that really my audience was just, was just like this lab, you know? I mean, just for it to work here. But yeah, yeah, I would have to think about Yeah, that. so hopefully for everybody's good, right? The first thing that we're missing here is we can't really connect the, the vision statement without knowing the audience. Yeah. It, needs to, it needs to match. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anything else that comes up for anybody? Something really small. You're not just doing the for, doing this for uh, to be able to control the system, but to monitor the system. Yeah. To get the data. So, adding maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think you. Yeah, I think you're following that. But uh, to me, your results are a little bit undersold. In respect of the community, you can enhance not only safety and. You can you can enhance like the speed rate, how fast you can go about it. You, you can tap into mm -hmm. more data acquisition, automation, blah blah blah, right? Um, so it could be sold. I think you could sell it much better. Yeah, your results could be. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it could be a little higher impact. Yeah. 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 yeah that's true. Okay. okay. I think this is a this is a good start. You know, I think. I wanted to start rather than going too much into the small details, right? I want to start high level. And I think that the main piece that we were missing here is all right, you have a key state, you have a key finding, whatever that is, but who are you telling the story to before yeah. you go into the story, right? Yeah. I think that's that's maybe one of that's our important. like key points here. Um let's move on to another example. Yeah. Oh um, stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I should I should yeah, Jack. Yeah, I can do it. Thank you. Um let's see. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, so sorry, sorry, I'm doing this for the MRCO example. But um, the key finding, so I'll start off with the 
key finding here, uh, we can resolve attosecond SASE substructure and high rate X-ray pulses using machine learning determinist deterministically for online analysis. Um, a title I was thinking about was uh, well, attosecond resolution single shot X-ray pulse reconstruction with uh, Decipher, That's the name of the network that I'll define later. Um, the vision statement is something like at XFPL facilities, X-rays are generated from an inherently noise-driven process known as self-amplified spontaneous emission, meaning shot to shot, the X-ray substructure varies. All these X-ray pulses must be reconstructed, reconstructed in data processing from in-station diagnostics in order for experiments to know uh, what, what they get. Some of the X-ray shots won't be usable for certain experiments, um, and others will have particularly beneficial qualities. As Slack undergoes major rip rate upgrades, the data processing pipeline and storage will be put under a lot of data pressure. So eliminating or offloading less beneficial shots and highlighting more useful shots will relieve this pressure. Furthermore, for certain experiments reliant on out of second characteristics of the expert substructure, a significant opportunity to leverage the high rate data and noise driven nature in order uh, to online sort data for fluctuating shots for X-ray pump X-ray probe experiments, for example. Um, sorry, just kind of a rough, written yeah. thing there. Um, and I was targeting a journal format, uh, gonna shoot for nature machine intelligence or nature communications, but that, you know, whatever, it'll get rejected from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, So that's like four to six figures with an intro results discussion and methods. Great, and, yeah, and pretty broad, right? I mean, it's, it's these two yeah. are relatively broad audience, yeah. Yeah, these are pretty broad audience. Um, uh, the figures that I'm kind of thinking about showing, or this would be the first figure that kind of shows what the diagnostic is, what it is, is it's this circular X-ray detector here um, with a gas sample and the uh, X-ray coming in, sorry, it's covering up part of the X-ray pulse and then a streaking infrared pulse. And I don't have to go into too many details right now, but just showing how you pull out the data from there and, and construct some sinograms out of the data. Uh, the next figure would focus on the machine learning algorithm portion of uh, taking this sinogram and how you how we're in a novel way, to my knowledge, applying a LSTM for image classification in a single image. Um, and then feeding later layers from that into a uh, characteristic retrieval from this sinogram to, to see the, the phase and energy of these sine waves. Um, figure three would show just like this array of example shots for the classification portion of like, uh, show some training error, which show, I know these aren't detailed images, but cross entropy matrices basically showing how good the prediction is. And then uh, shots showing the ones that they hit correctly and ones that they misidentified and where the complexities arise. Mm -hmm. um, and then figure four would look uh, regression for a single SASE subspike case of predicting phase and energy um, and then uh, looking at how that distribution looks like. And then the next figure would be for a two pulse case um, predicting phase difference between the two pulses and then the energy of the two pulses, sub pulses. Um, and probably some tables on like errors and runtime information. Um, and depending on the final results of some stuff, like maybe comparing different models, but that might be beyond the scope. Um, general methods were LSTM for classification, regression tacked on for phase and energy, maybe using a capsule network for phase and energy um, and some this kind of more detailed discussion on how we had to tune our error functions to actually match the items that we're trying to retrieve. Um, the, the results kind of follow the figures. And then the thing I mentioned before, Decipher, was just a name for the network I came up with, which was deterministic classification of intertwined features at high resolution. Um, how does this D point fit into the structure? I mean, I understand that you want to uh, name this, but um, what is this? Oh, that's that was this. I, I saw a. Uh, that was part of the title. And I've seen kind of a pattern where people name their novel network stuff in some way that people can remember. 
So that was just a random point I had on there to define just, what this is. Yeah. Not necessary, it's just I see people define their networks in a certain way. And it's always a good opportunity to have some fun naming. Um, sure thing, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Deciphering yeah. features from there, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, that's pretty complete. Let's see, any, yeah, what are any responses to this? Uh, constructive critiques, things that you're missing uh, from, from Jack's uh, overview? Yeah. Probably next door they have the equipment. So we have a little weird uh, repetitive chip sound on, on this side. Um, yeah, anybody? Comments, please. Don't shy away. Questions. Doesn't have to be constructive. It can be mean. It can be anything. <laughs> Even if it's just like, oh, I, I think it's great. I love it. You know, that also counts. Silence speaks loudly. I think, I mean, I personally think you, uh, I want everybody to really participate in this, right? It's a little bit interactive. So I yeah. want to encourage that. My personal take is that I think you did a pretty good job. I don't have any major critique uh, at all. My only thing would be if I were to play editor of this journal, I would have a bit of a hard time thinking, okay, your application is very particular to Xbox, right? Um, so I would need some way to justify, and, and the journal that you chose is great, but it's broader audience. So I would have to find a way in which this really feeds into the broader readership of my journal, you know? So I see my only critique here that I see a bit of a disconnect between your story is great, it's the methods and the figures match it really great. That's a, it's a fantastic paper, okay? The choice of the community doesn't fully map the main message that you have. So they have to be here either a different choice of a journal or a restructuring of, a, of your methods and results such that this is expansible to a wider set of uh, uh, stakeholders within these journals, right? Nature comes is a tricky thing because I think it's a catch-all for any non-nature photonics, oh. non-nature physics. So it's a hit or miss, you know, for uh, uh, for machine learning intelligence. Um, I I have a feeling that maybe the methods could be. I'm not really sure. I'm just this is muddy, so I don't have a specific feedback here. But that that's the only thing that comes for me when I look at this. Otherwise, you did a great job. Yeah. I think you hit on the point because that was one of my. I mean, that was one of the reasons I. If I was targeting first the nature machine intelligence community, then that wording of the decipher network you know prominently featuring in the title set sets the stage for how it needs to focus on the network itself for a particular application and a, an application that i need to figure I'm, you're better at this than i am but i need to make sure to frame it as a broad case of you know it's high rate data coming in that we need to process the high rate application we're doing in real time is for x-ray science and we're resolving really small features so if I frame it like that, then I might be able to say this is a broad problem for, you know, if you have information coming in at high speeds and you need to have fine timing resolution or extract information from it, here's our way of approaching this. And it's for this particular application so that I can, I think I can figure out how to adjust that message, but I need to make sure that it matches with the, the journal properly. Um, yeah. yeah. This is, this was a this was an actual paper that we're writing now. I mean, it's kind of actually probably an actual paper. Anyway, I yeah. think I would want to sit down with you and think, okay, let's 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 think about how we draft the message. I mean, let's let's do the journal main message sort of crafting again. We could even say, look, it might just be good to go to Nature Photonics, for example, because it's very X-ray, ultra fast science centric. Yeah. With a, you know, so there's multiple ways here where you can massage it. There's no right or wrong. But this teaches you that you can have amazing science and now you still have to sort of cram it within the constraints of an editorial board with an editorial mission, right? And that's that's yep. a bit the key that we have to, this is why I keep telling you guys, don't obsess over these nature papers. They're important, but also, you know, it just kind of, it doesn't speak to the, the relevance of the work as much as it does of the fitness and interest of the editor at the time 
a single person really at a time with like a bunch of other things that are coming in that issue, right? So it's a bit of a crapshoot. Yep. Yeah. But I think this is great. Thanks for sharing that, Jack. Unless there's any other comments from anybody, I'd like to pull up another example. Um, another volunteer. Let's see. Relate how? Could you please show something for us? Yeah, sure. But uh, let me try to pull up something. <clears throat> Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my homework is uh, aiming to using the uh, spectral phase manipulation to generate at a second pass. Uh, it's quite similar to the inverse design project I mentioned before. Uh, the key finding is uh, use the four-way mixing uh, method and the spectral phase transfer to generate the at a second pass. Uh, in the future project, uh, the figure is very, very rough. So please. Uh, well, it's don't. much, much better yeah. than, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a doodle, right? It's supposed, this is supposed to be a sketch, not even an actual. Yeah, it's just a sketch. Right? So it's like, not rough. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, <laughs> the main work is to using the this technique to generate the atto second, which I think this is a, a novel method for, uh, for for the atto second science community, and uh, currently they are using HHG, so high harmonic generation. So, uh, we don't use the high high harmonic generation. So, uh, I think this project might be uh, interesting, and will be helpful for the XFIL community in the future, and. Um, yeah, the main idea is to add a small perturbation peaks in the uh, in the signal pulse at the signal pulse, and then use the uh, uh, inverse design to get the spectral phase, and then apply this spectral phase at the real setup so that we can uh, achieve that uh, small perturbation in the time profile. Um, so yeah. can, we, can we pause here for a moment? Because I, I see that you've tried to do this, right? I find it's a little bit, uh, I don't want to go in circles, right? I just, it, this is kind of the, the, the first pass to this process is to just tackle these things a little bit linearly, just cascadedly, right? So what other features would you have? Before we go into the methods, what other figures would you add here? What would be uh -huh. your figure one, your figure two? How many figures do you have? I know that I you haven't, you, know, you can think about it out loud. Yeah, because my journal selection is uh, uh, very high level, so I prepared uh, four to five figures, and um, each figure might have three or four sub figures. Okay, can we this? Can you describe briefly what your figures would be? Yeah, the first one is the uh, the method uh, the method overview schematic workflow, and then the second figure should be the um, the following mixing uh, simulation result. And uh, the third figure is uh, experiment setup. And uh, uh, then the third, uh, the fourth figure is the, the fourth and five, fifth figure are the uh, experiment result. What are the, what are the experiment results look like? Uh, I assume they are more similar to this one. I see. So, um, yeah, I have some thoughts already on that. Since we don't have the figures, I want to speak to these rather than wait until the end. So now, now I guess my, you know, and I don't want to put you in the spot. Okay, this is just a, an open discussion, hopefully for everybody. What I'm missing now is a connection between, so you, your figures tell your story, right? But your title is something around inverse design for out of second x-rays, right? Mm -hmm. Yet, you're not you're not planning on telling us you're not planning on showing us uh out of second x-rays you're not planning on showing us anything about the expo i mean maybe the expo is in the workflow but that's about it so it sounds to me like based on your figures you're telling a story about four wave mixing and how that could be used for out of second x-rays uh, yeah. Like that, right so there is there's a disconnect here between the story that you're telling in your value statement and in your title and the story that you're telling with your figures 
I hope this is clear to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. You're just you're talking about poet mixing. Right? Yeah. Right. Um so this this is an obvious disconnect that needs to be worked on right? in this particular exercise. So you don't have to do it, right? I see, um, I see. Do you want to decide which way you want to go? Meaning, let's workshop this here. Do you want to revise your title or do you want to revise your figures? Uh, I think that I, I will revise my title because uh, this is a very temporal title. I see. So can you, again, I don't want to put you in this, but say pass if you don't want to. Can you come up with an ugly title right now if, based on the, uh, the, the figures that you have? Uh, an ugly title, okay? It's just going to be as long as you want to. <laughs> uh, spectral phase manipulation where four way mixing for uh, atom second uh, applications. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it could be application, you know, maybe atom second electron beam manipulation and subsequent X ray generation, something like that, right? Yeah. You clearly are. You, the central point is that you're doing phase spectrum manipulation and some nonlinear technique, right? And you're trying to put that in the context of this at a second uh, electron beam extra production factor. Okay. Um, then, could you share a little more about your methods? The the methods you were thinking for this main. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the main method is to uh first uh, generate a target pulse. And then use the algorithm to find the uh, spectral phase, and then you uh, we apply this simulate spectral phase to the real experiment, and then we can get the target uh, pulse profile. This is okay. a, a key idea of this uh, paper. Great. Okay. Uh, any I have more thoughts, but I also don't wanna. Dominate the conversation. Has anybody any comments for or questions for uh, add-ons to a uh, house presentation or a, a sort of sketch? Yeah, I had a question. Yeah, so sure. for the you said for the experimental results, you'd have two figures, mm -hmm. um, but then you said that the result would. I mean, you're hoping, predicting, hoping that it looks somewhat like the simulation. But for the simulation, you really only had one time figure uh, or time domain figure what were your yeah, plans actually, for actually i plan to put the pump signal and idler there so but i only have one okay but that still just is like that would all be in one figure still right mm -hmm. i guess for the experiment results what it sounds and i'm not critique i'm just curious it sounds like it's just one figure for the experimental results i don't uh, it's no. not clear uh, to me we, what the we can change we can change some parameters for the for the simulation okay. and experiment. So okay, you so can do some sub okay. sub experiment at the same time. Okay, so it's okay. So it's changing some parameters to show uh two different ones. Okay. Yeah, to show the robust. That works. And I mean, let's see. Okay. I think after the clarification from Sergio's comments, I think that's all I have. Yeah, thank you. Did he touch on the audience, or did you? Yeah, he talked about the the yeah the he talked about the um, the the journals. So, yeah, I mean, in, in effect, he did right. He also, high profile papers in it, like pretty broad. Um, anybody else? Any other comments or questions? I have one only. Uh, and again, I don't want to cherry pick, right? This is an exercise to to for everybody to do mode matching and, and how to put things in context. Since you are talking about inverse design, I'm missing what I'm missing here an impact statement. I would be, well, why is this better with inverse design as opposed to just doing the forward mixing modulation and just running the facility? Just like down, you know, just just usual, the usual like uh, downstream sort of process. Why inverse design, right? I think you can uh, answer question right and and yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to answer that question but i'm not seeing that being answered in the in the figures strongly you know how do you compare one approach versus the other why would i want to do inverse design 
you probably want to do it because it's really complicated. It's uh, difficult to do otherwise. But um, imagine that the experts say, Agol is reading this paper. He might tell you, oh, we don't need to do inverse design. You just kind of put a little modulation, run a couple hours and find the spike and move on, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I know this is an imaginary paper, right? Mm -hmm. And so and you don't need to answer this question, but you would have to, um, um, you have inverse design in there, you have it in the title, you have it in the methods. And yet the vision statement to me doesn't anchor it yet with the figures on how inverse design can make life better as opposed to uh, just running it downstream. Right? So that's a little extra component that I think is not off, it's not completely off, but it needs it needs a little better. It doesn't click fully. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Let's 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 see. If we can sneak in another one or two if we're lucky. I created a little. Just just I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Just create a little roulette. Yeah. Um, I think I didn't miss any names, so let's see. Uh, I never used this. Shuffle. <laughs> what can we do here? How do I how do I click? Oh, there you go. <laughs> and I think it's gonna be Lin Shan. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Can <laughs> speak? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this uh, job, you guys are writing the full paper already. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, uh the, the title of the key finding is the phase transfer in This is your actual research, right? Right. Uh, so this yeah, is really yeah, from, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty clear. Yeah, and phase transfer in photo fiber by probably missing the uh, the phase information can be transfer can be mapping from the signal to the to the other pulses. And and the community could be uh, could be the indirect pulse shaping, the ultra short UV generation, deep UV pulse generation, photo maybe some, maybe also in photo emission. So just to clarify, is, are you are you removing your second sentence and your key finding? Because this is this is this is quite essential for the audience, right? Um, are you are you staying only with the first sentence, or you want to make this about UV pulse shaping? Uh, UV pulse shaping. You want to make it about UV pulse shaping? Uh, okay. No, uh, no, no, not really. I, I think I think this paper should be concentrated on the phase transport. Okay, so and then you UV shaping will be another project. Okay, so then and you keep finding you want to remove then that second sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Because I I think this this project should con uh, concentrate on the uh, phase transport equations or the similarities in the two pulses. Now the if we want to do the real shaping. Um, we may don't there. Uh, we we might don't don't have to care too much about the phase transfer the similar similarity. Sure, sure. I I don't. What I'm trying to say is there's no right or wrong. It's yeah, your yeah. choice. I'm asking you just for the exercise. Then there's no UV. There's no focus on UV necessarily. The, okay. the paper is about phase, phase transfer, transfer, right? Yeah, oh, yeah sure. And your key finding yeah. is just your first sentence. Then. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And about the master, we can start from the the theory, the calculation. Uh, so, so what's your audience then? Uh, I, I mean, the, uh, in the master part or the, in the in the theory or experiment part, you can start from the theory. The, what's your What's your audience? Meaning, all, where all are you going to publish this? What's the format? That's a, That's the next thing, right? Uh, I mean, you mean the journal selection or yeah, you don't uh, know It's just a family. What does it look like? A letter, article, uh, article or, or article or letter. It's uh, it's what is either an article yeah, or a letter? Yeah, which yeah. which one? Just choose one. Yeah. Uh, Based on yeah. how many figures you have. Yeah. You know. if, if I have four figures, I'll choose the letter, of course. If if four figures is not enough to to present the, the, the result, all the results, maybe a, an article will be more suitable. I think maybe we not maybe I, again this is just an exercise. Remember, the exercise really dictates that we have a value statement, right? And mm -hmm. then you think about the figures based mm -hmm. on the story you want to tell. But it doesn't sound like, do you have your figures decided yet? Uh, I thought it is, uh, this figure could be the main result. So, so how many figures do you have? Uh, for now, only three. 
So okay. uh, later we'll All right, great. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. let's go okay. in, let's go in order, right? Okay, let's go in yeah. order. Yeah. So you have three you have three figures to tell your story of face transfer. Therefore, mm -hmm. you choose a letter. Three or four. Okay. Yeah. What's what what are the first what's the first uh, figure? What's the second and what's the third? Uh, the first one can be uh, can be uh, I copied this figure from house 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 graph. Uh, this is the our our for missing fundamental information or laser for setup. And the second figure should be our setup and our experimental methods. Like uh, we need to frog the IR pulse first and frog the UV pulse we generated uh, after the hyperfiber and compare compare the spectral phase distribution between the idler and, uh, and signal. They can also prove the original frog traces and as uh, as well as the spectral phase distribution. So what is this third figure then? Your results basically? Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. frog results in and out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Either um, and signal. Uh, uh yeah, I, I, yeah, either and signal. Either and signal. Okay. Okay. And uh, we uh, prepared for a case study the linear phase, parabolic phase, random the random phase, mm -hmm. and uh, Maybe more about the amplitude phase, uh, um, amplitude transfer, because amplitude more convenient, it's easier to, to control, to do more case studies. Yeah, and if we still have space, how the latter only have, uh, have a limitation for under four pages, maybe four pages. So we can also add some results of the temporal shape, because we already have the frog at that time. What do you mean? I thought you were already showing that with the frog. Uh, the frog. Uh, I mean, in this figure, there's frog traces. Uh, with, with this, uh, with the UV pulse is the uh, is the spectral intensity versus the delay time, and that's the trace. And it can also plot uh, by this and uh, uh, and the right hand side is the spectral phase, spectral and and spectral phase, and uh, by, by this. Figures we can also plot the temporal shape, it's the intensity versus I see, okay. yeah, to add more information on the pulses. Okay, and then so then would be what are your methods? Uh, methods? Yeah, what are your methods? Uh, methods. I, I, I yeah, I'm from <laughs> methods. I, There's a few bullet points. You can speak to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to start start from the equations from the theory. And and stated that uh, the uh, older the the uh, the even uh, the even older and older uh, older and old uh, older can be transferred to the other uh, to the other houses with the same or opposite sign, and we can also put put, put some simulations from house side. To say we use a theory, you have a simulation, um, and based on the simulation figures, we can say that uh, what kind of what kind what kind of experimental results we, we want to get from the experiment. Mm, I see. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what method is more like. Okay, I've used these equations. I use this specific uh, uh, reconstruction of a frog. Uh, what experimental method to use, right? Uh, I think it's I think it's simpler than what you're describing, yeah. but you also yeah. seem to be yeah. mixing things a little bit, up, right? Um, um, yeah. Why would you talk about theory? This is an experimental paper, right? So uh, it's a letter, also. So you have don't you don't have space to talk about theory? Uh, I think yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Uh, since this is a pretty realistic case scenario, I think it can also give you feedback. Mm -hmm. How just submitted to Optics Express? Mm -hmm. Did you? I can't remember. Uh, we, he has an archive paper on the theory of this trade of study. Yeah, yeah. So you can consider That's that. Set. You consider that settled, right? Yeah. Now you're doing the demonstrations. Okay. You don't have to talk about it because okay. it's already been published. Okay. okay. That's right. Because a, a little nuance, yeah. But um, okay. Yeah. Uh, impressions from, please impressions from um from the audience on. I mean, you don't need to. <laughs> Just an exercise. <laughs> please. This is an exercise, okay, guys. You don't, don't change your paper ideas. Uh, impressions for for Lynch and comments. Uh, sorry, I forgot which paper are you going to submit. Uh, assuming maybe OL, maybe optical letter, maybe and 
Okay. Optic, I think Optica is a really very top pair. All right, Optica. Yeah. What does that tell us? Okay, you tell us an audience, but I'm missing something. You go on Optica, why? Uh, for for the face transform. Uh, yeah, but why are you going Optica and not to uh, Josephy? <laughs> what do you? I I missed. I entirely missed your value statement. Who cares about this? How how high is the impact? Right. Uh. I think, I think uh, no, I mean, you don't have to answer it, right? But what's something that's missing here that you didn't do in the exercise is your vision statement. This is why it's so important to yeah. do it second, right? Yeah. If I keep finding it now, like, okay, but who cares about this? I think the business world should be pretty important, should be very. Important. And so then, why do you say it's optic sliders or optica? Those are optica wants to be nature photonics, but it's not, okay? Optics that is a good moderate. Uh, and, but mm -hmm. you don't need to answer this, right? But mm -hmm. feedback number one is you did not think about the vision statement, really, mm -hmm. right? And so the exercise and this exercise is do not rush to any of these things, do not rush to the figures until you have a clear vision statement and audience. That's the, you first have a key finding, you you find it in the lab and your when your calculations great. Mm -hmm. The next thing is who cares about this? Actually, does anybody care about this? Mm -hmm. I find all kinds of things during the day. And, Nobody asked you. <laughs> so don't go, you know, follow this process linearly, right? Don't go anywhere else until you have a value statement. Okay. Yeah. Significance also plays a role to choosing which journal. Yeah, it's a little bit the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Significance is, I think, more specific to the later, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's what I'm speaking to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who cares about that? Why? Mm -hmm. I think it could be super polished, right? But it just gives you an idea. Yeah. Okay. More. More input or comments for religion. I think figure one. Uh, I'm looking at figure one. I, I don't know if I if I would if I would get you know the the idea behind the paper from the figure one. So figure um, one is you know I, I kind of see yeah. it as a data as a. Yeah, actually, I wanted the uh when I copied this paper from house raft, I uh, only uh, or I'm more comfortable. I, I'm more like the bigger K and and I is the, the blue line, blue dashed line is the input 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 signal pulse phase, and and the red dashed line is the output uh, other phase. But for the other other side, you can see the phase of the other is uh, very. Uh, close to linear, linear. linear yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's not let's not get caught up in the details. Let me show you explaining what the figure is. Uh -huh. Great. Uh -huh. Abbas is telling you something else. He's not telling you he doesn't understand the figure. He's telling you this. If this is your figure one, and I want to tell a story visually, mm -hmm. I think about you making a comic. You don't yeah, have any yeah, text yeah. yet. Yeah. I look at my first vignette, and I'm like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Yeah, it should be That's a... what he's telling you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think uh yeah I agree that we, we, we actually with the very simple uh, diagram to show what we are doing going to do in this in this work. It's not easy, Linchan, to to see you what in your first yeah. video you want to say I want to talk about how I can uh, write phase uh, in a in a in a pulse, right? Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, and it's it's really not easy. And this is usually your figure one is your I mean conceptual. It's it's a tough one. Is the one that you want to think carefully yeah, about. Yeah, I'm not uh, when I say easy, it's not easy. It's it's clear. It's uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. I mean, clear so clear. I might be here. My feedback is I might be old school. I might be very old school. But I like it. when you have an experimental paper. I like the first figure to be either or. I mean, a conceptual diagram. Uh -huh. If, this, if the experimental setup is really complex, uh, some people like write OPCPAs and they add like the 15,000 optics that they have. And I think that's a little bit overwhelming, but either a conceptual figure, which is very similar to the conceptual figure that Hal showed, you just have to, some medium to continue, you know, mm -hmm. a conceptual figure mm -hmm. or an experimental figure. Mm -hmm. I like that because it's an experimental paper. So it puts things in perspective. Oh, you can combine both. You could have a, a conceptual little thing and then a, a diagramming, you know, but I, and you don't have to do it, but I'm pretty old school. I like an inexpensive paper to be like, Maybe what are they doing? Places. Right? So the first, yeah, it's something like that. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I can plot some faces exactly. inside of the temple shape. And then, and then it would make more sense that your second figure is, yeah, the predictions potential. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. If you want to touch yeah. a theory, it depends on the story a little bit. Yeah. I'm not really sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank well, you for your... Can I make a follow-up comment? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, I agree, and I was trying to think about this too. Um, go to your second figure for a second. So this one has a lot of white space, so it might be a good uh, point to like, if you, you know, had this figure as figure one, but then showed an mm -hmm. insert kind of blowing up the fiber and showing the physics happening in the fiber and try to, in that same image, demonstrate the idea of this linear uh, regime versus this nonlinear regime in terms of phase transfer, like that could really help. And then that way you get the best of both worlds of seeing the experiment right away, seeing the physics going on in the fiber and seeing the breakout of the two regimes and how you're, you know, that kind of thing. That's, that was what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you could even go overboard. Problems. Sometimes some people, you could even go overboard, right? And even add your key results right away. Remember, a paper is not a thriller, it's not a novel. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a bean spiller. You spill the beans right away. So you could even like have like, your little conceptual figure here, right? I mean, it would be really busy. I wouldn't do it this way, but some people would even say, you know, after this fraud, you would add one figure, you know, one key result and another key result, for mm -hmm. example. That is not simulation, it's actually result. And then you and then you elaborate more on your third figure and what these results look yeah. like. But some people would actually do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, things like, you know, is this necessary, right? But anyway, we're here, we're here getting too much into the English. Um, a conceptual figure is not a must to have, right? So yeah. you, you can start with your... Yeah. Like, I think it's a matter of simplicity. When your actual experimental diagram is too complicated, it might be helpful. If your concept is really out there and people haven't thought about it, you may want to have a conceptual figure. But if you have an OPA, right? Like, you know, people know what it is. Go straight to this kind of it's yeah. matter, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is not, yeah, there's no prescribed. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else comes up? Yeah, I personally don't have any strong, other strong feelings here. I think my main point is your value statement has to be thought of almost first, right? Uh, like right yeah. after, right? Um, and so that that helps you choose the audience in the journal and then the story that you're going to tell. Um, I have a few comments. For example, well, your title says face transfer, but then you decide what amplitude shaping into your figures. So what are you telling me? You know, maybe change your title, maybe write a second paper on amplitude shaping. I know it seems like you're repeating a lot of the same, and we didn't do this in, in our group as well, really, but there are literally people who just like change a little thing in their in their experiment and they're like publish another paper, right? And it's, I'm not saying whether, it, whether that is an absolute always right or wrong, I think it depends, but what I'm gonna say is that every time you have a key result, you can have a key a, a paper. So I just want you to match your key results. So if you if your key results are on phase transfer, then just limit yourself to phase transfer. If you're adding amplitude shipping as well, then make your title and your value statement changes entirely, right? Mm -hmm. This is why it's important to follow those. It's a kind of like a coupled equation system. This is why you want to kind of follow it in line because if you touch out now a figure, you have to go and touch your title, mm -hmm. right? It has to be all self-consistent. So you have amplitude shipping. Now I take issue with your value statement in your title because it's not representative of your story. It's a different key result. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so it yeah. needs to be really clear what you want to tell from the beginning. Okay. And, and both are right. You know, you could have amplitude and phase, or you could have amplitude and then phase in another paper. You yeah. know, yeah. you yeah. choose, right? But it has to be self consistent. Yeah. That way yeah. we get two dinners too. That's great. That's great. Sometimes That's you great. can get indigestion. You have two dinners, so be careful. Take off. Take off. Yeah. Um, I think we have a minute or so for any other input. It, we won't have time That's to share problem. more, but. Uh, at least within journal club. But if any of you want to discuss with all of you or, or with me what you may have come across in your exercise, please do so, right? This is supposed to be, I'm also learning, right? And this is supposed to be a, a learning exercise. It's not, we're not eviscerating any ideas. This is just made up, right? except for in your case, this is an actual paper. <laughs> Still have to get the results. Still have to get the results. I mean, I have to two, two papers. <laughs> you beat that. Um, so yeah, any any final thoughts? I yeah, I don't know if anybody has anything to add. Uh, all, 
while you think it's whether you want to have anything said, I want to ask you if you if you want to. I don't want you to put you this put you in the spot, but send me a Slack message if you wish to say something strong about this exercise. Whether you actually learned something or whether it was a waste of time, I won't be offended. Really, the point here is to use this time effectively. And so, if you didn't really uh, learn much, please tell me why or what could have been done better. Uh, if you actually found it useful and you think it's going to help you write papers, also tell me that. If you are agnostic and you don't really care about this exercise, also please tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, just impressions, you know, it's like, oh, well, this is kind of useful. Oh, this was very useful. I'm like, this was a waste of time. And you weep with stuff, right? Because um, I have other ideas, like, you know, uh, writing cover letters, letters of recommendation, career development. I have little ideas for workshops like this, but I'm not really sure whether it's really good use of our time. And the last thing I want to do is add useless meeting time to our schedules. My, my life is dominated by meetings, and so I don't want to bring this to you guys. That's it. Um, we can finish a minute early. So thanks everybody who contributed to the discussion. I know it must not be fully easy to show this, but uh, yeah, reach out or, or check in with me later if you want to discuss more in private, okay? Thanks everyone. <laughs>